Uh, actually, ways of fun. This is not. This is not confirmed. But this is one that I find very interesting in the way the comics business worked. And I'll always, I've always found it very intriguing. Um, supposedly, when Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster were becoming unhappy with the way they were being treated, or you know, their their claim that DC wasn't paying what they were supposed to pay. Um, Jerry reportedly called Bob Kane and said, well, let's get, you know, let's get their biggest guys together and uh, really show them that you know, they, they have to play ball or they're not going to be able to put stuff on. And supposedly, Kane said, let me think about that. Hung up, called his dad, who was sort of his business advisor, a new lawyer, and she said, I think we need to set up to create a new deal with Jack Lee And basically went in saying, well, you know, Siegel's about to try to create a suit. He wants me to join him. If you give me a better deal, <laughs> I'll say no to Jerry. <laughs> and it's just the, and which is supposedly why Bob got had this incredibly good deal. That plus just actually having a lawyer negotiating for him, which, which Jerry and Joe never did. But there's just something about, as much as that we want to tell the story as if it's the evil owners against the innocent freelancers. There was this tremendous um, backstabbing, manipul- maneuvering going on, even among the freelancers. It was such a wildcat business. It was such a get it now business. And, uh, yeah, that was the, that was the, the, the texture of the times. Um, just a history question. Yes. Um, one of my writers recently reviewed uh, Gladiator. Okay. The the, the Phil Pelley. Well, yeah. yeah, the Phil. Yeah. And challenges the idea that Gladiator was real. I mean, he's always said that that's an inspiration for Superman, uh, but it is so different from Superman. Yeah, yeah. What's your take on the connection there? Do you think there really was a connection, or is it just something where people draw parallels that there aren't really? I'm starting to doubt, actually. I think what's what's a lot clearer, and even this is a little bit inference. It seems like Gladiator may have influenced Doc Savage more mm-hmm. than Superman. Um, and by way of influencing Doc Savage, influenced some of the later Superman stuff, especially the stuff that Weisinger, because Weisinger consciously brought, Weisinger and his writers consciously brought Doc Savage stuff, like the Fortress of Solitude. Right. And I think we kind of forget how different the original Superman was from the one we grew up on. So yeah, when you really look at pure Superman and Gladiator, they look pretty different. Um, but it's like the Gladiator influence by way of Doc Savage was sort of waiting out there for Superman. Sure. Sorry, totally great. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, going back to stories of freelancers, yeah. what, do you see uh, unionization? In the future at all? I just don't. I mean, there's been a couple times it almost seemed possible, and then it, it collapsed so completely and, and swiftly. I don't, you know, um, freelance creators are really hard to get organized into into games. Um, I think that we, we just have a basic sort of resistance to the concept, and the business is not as there are more there are a lot more options. The business is not as constricted and oppressive as it used to be. <laughs> so I think as long as freelancers can keep finding out, you know, can keep finding different avenues, you know, here's the place that it lets you keep keep all rights for a bit less money. Here's the place that pays you more but keeps your rights. I don't think any sort of you know organized resistance and organized bargaining is really going to happen. We can not. So I guess that's yeah. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks.